welcome to this Unleash the Color of Transfer session. I'm Zach. This session is about maximizing profit with ultra color. And it's an introduction to what we call the lean logo formula. So if you attended um, our class, our live event in January, you heard just just a little bit about what the lean logo formula is. It's a formula that we use at the stalls decorating facility that's based in southwestern Pennsylvania when we do decorating with uh, screen print digital transfers with uh, ultra color transfers. So we, uh, myself and, and my team in that decorating facility are using ultra color transfers on a daily basis to make money for the facility. So we wanted to teach you what was behind um, how we do that, how we uh, work through pricing, how we work through costing, and the secret to uh, the Lean Logo formula, and hopefully your success. So our, my real goal today is show, to show you how our decorating facility makes things uh, work in examples that translate to uh, markets and, and hopefully the business that you are starting. So... I saw the question come up uh, earlier in the day, what is ultra color? And I think even if you've attended all the sessions, maybe we have somebody new on, I'd like to define what ultra color is. So ultra color is a transfer technology. It's a digital screen printed transfer. It's putting digital and screen print together to create a heat transfer. But what it really is, at least from a business perspective, is it's an opportunity. Ultra color is an opportunity to one, transform your business or two, be the foundation for your future business or the one that, that you're working on planning. So that's really where our focus is. How does ultra color either one, transform our existing business, our existing decorating business, or two, how does it build a great foundation for a new decorating business? All right. That being said, I usually like, I, I heard a story once and I know it was from a book and I'm sorry, I can't quote the book to you that it was from, but um, it was about someone who wanted to become a great uh, violin player and their violin teacher took them to a concert where a professional uh, concert violinist was playing just to set the expectation or really see what can be achieved by just practicing and doing uh, what that teacher was instructing the student to do to show them the heights that they could reach. So what I'd like to do today is start at the end. I want you to meet Michael. Michael is a 51 year old mechanical engineer. I know the picture Michael looks probably a little bit, you know, he looks like a good 51, uh, oh. but that's because it's a uh, stock photo that we took for you. But Michael is a real person, that's not him, uh, but he is a 51 year old mechanical engineer. Michael started screen printing for, uh, according to him, this is a quote, his kids' sports stuff. And what that meant was he had kids in travel sports. He was going every weekend somewhere to watch a daughter play volleyball or a son play basketball or whatever the travel sports were. And he found himself spending $100 every weekend to buy two sweatshirts, one with the, uh, to commemorate the event, basically, whatever the event was that they were going to those weekends. So Michael decided that it would be a, big money saving venture for him to start printing shirts himself. So that's why he got into the decorating business. And Michael built a nice little screen printing business. That's what he started with. He invested in screen printing. And he told us that uh, he would look at it at the end of every year because it became too much work or he was like, is this really worth giving up my evenings to do this? But every time he would sit down and look at the numbers with his family, they found out, well, we're actually selling about $30,000 in apparel annually. And that's without really uh, even trying. It was just a nice little screen print business that he built. So Michael didn't want to quit screen printing. Stalls reached out to Michael, one of our uh, sales rep reached out when uh, the Ultra Color product launched and pitched him on the Lean Logo business. And Michael told us that he was sold on it in 10 minutes. And these were the reasons why. His first job that he put through his uh, the Lean Logo formula, it cost him $325 to buy the logos from Transfer Express. He spent $1,800 in apparel on this particular job from various suppliers. It was a 300 piece order that he was going to produce. It took him 
six and a half hours to decorate those 300 pieces using ultra color digital screen print transfers. And his sale price on that job was $6,586.45. That left him with the 1800 in apparel minus the 325 in logos with a profit with his cost of goods out of it of $4,461. So Michael paid himself on that job $685 an hour just to use his heat press. So the lean logo formula in the lean logo business provides opportunities for you to make this type of money on your decorating jobs. So the rest of our time here is going to be about how that's possible and how you can make it happen. So one thing that the lean logo business is or that the formula gets you is you'll find that it's extremely easy to scale. And I mean that in two ways. So there's, there's two reasons it's extremely easy to scale. One is the minimal amount of space that's required to run a lean logo business. And two is the minimal amount of people. Basically, if you have a heat press, you need one person operating that heat press. I'm going to show you some profit numbers on that here in just a minute. But the space that's required, you can see the room uh, behind me here. We are set up with a lean logo business with just what's behind me. I want to show you a slide. This is some comparison just for perspective in case you don't already own a heat press and you're just considering this investment for the first time. Did you know that a queen size bed, a standard queen size bed, is more than five times larger than the space your equipment requires. So we have the little visual up there for you. You can, you can fit your heat press on your bed, keep it there when you have a job, keep it under your bed when you don't have a job, if you have that kind of space. But uh, queen size bed's five times larger. You can also see in the diagram in the bottom right of your screen that your heat press will also fit inside a standard bathtub. It would also fit in half of a standard shower stall. So those are just some comparisons for perspective about how much space is really required to start a lean logo business or even to grow. You can obviously fit multiple heat presses in the size that a queen size bed is going to take up. So if you wanted to convert a spare bedroom into your lean logo business, you have room to scale just in that one small bedroom uh, in your home. So easy to scale with space. Secondly, and I'm gonna throw a bunch of numbers up on the screen. We're gonna walk through them, don't panic, okay? Secondly, to scale the business to double production, all you have to do is double your number of heat presses. So if you're starting with one to double your production, you only need two heat presses and you only have to add one operator. So what does that mean profitability wise to the business if you are adding uh, a heat press and an operator? So one heat press and one operator to look at the top left of the screen next to that's not all. One heat press and one operator equals about 20 logos each hour. OK, so this is just on average. This is based on production numbers that come from our uh, stalls decorating fulfillment center. So 20 logos each hour is an average operator. So that's what you're pressing one shirt every two minutes. OK, your average profit using the formula and the pieces of the lean logo business. So your cost of goods is going to be your ultra color screen print digital transfers, your average profit is going to be $5 per item. We can, we're gonna talk more about that closer to the end of the presentation. I'm gonna give you some concrete examples of why that's true, but trust me at this point in the presentation, $5 per hour is going to be an easy profit um, to get from each item that you're pressing. And we'll give you tips for how to, how to grow that. But for our, for our simple math, $5 of profit per item. So that means, that one heat press in your bedroom or wherever it is that you're going to place it, one heat press can return $100 an hour in profit. So that was our $5 per item times 20 items per hour, 20 logos per hour. That gets us $100 an hour. Now, if you move to the left, you see that you would only need about 50 hours to pay off your whole lean logo business investment. Now, I'm going to tell you more about um, a book that we just came out 
uh, uh, that just came out today that you can download after our session that's going to give you all the details of what's involved or that you need for that investment. But 50 hours at $100 profit an hour is a $5,000 investment to completely set up the business with heat press, sample transfers, sample garments, you anything you need to get started with the business, can you can get started for $5,000 or less. So you would need 50 hours of work to pay off one press. Follow the arrow. One heat press running at maximum capacity. And I, the maximum capacity I'm giving you is an average operator, 20 logos an hour. One heat press running at maximum capacity for a full year is $200,000 in profit. That's one heat press, one operator, ultra color transfers, and an average profit of $5 per item, which again, I'll show you that, that we can get significantly higher than that. So if it's me, and it was at one time, I want to know how I can keep that heat press going all the time, right? We need sales to keep that heat press going. But the focus of our time today, you, you hopefully have gained a lot from the sessions coming before this about how to sell into different markets, because um, hopefully you've noticed that the majority of our classes were really focused on how do you sell more, because the actual production, what you can get out of just a single heat press it's going, to be, it's going to be tough for you to outsell your heat press if you have a dedicated operator to it, unless you're really good at sales or land a large program. So the challenge is really on the sales part. So we focused there early. Now we're showing you how to make those sales work uh, for your profit. Okay. So there's a secret sauce to making this work. How do we guarantee that we're going to get $5 per of profit per item or more? Okay. The secret sauce, I'm giving them to you up front. The four, the four items that are uh, most important to making that work. And we're going to dig into each item with, with separate slides and more details. So how do you get to that $5 profit number? One, we're going to talk about standardizing logo sizes. And I'm going to show you why that's important. Two, we need to establish smart quantity breaks. Again, I'll show you how to do that and why it's important with some percentages and numbers based on Transfer Express's pricing. I don't have target transfers pricing in there, but you'll be able to copy and paste and it'll be very uh, a very similar outcome. You can apply the same principles that we're going to apply to the formula for Transfer Express pricing. Third, we're going to talk, uh, it's really third and fourth, we're going to talk product assortment and logo placement together. And then we're also going to talk about the no art fees which is saving you overhead and money uh, with Transfer Express. Okay, so that's where we're going to go. Standard logo sizes, smart quantity breaks, product assortment and logo placement, no art fees in the designer. All right, so I'm going to stop for just a second, and I haven't been able to, to keep up with the comments. I have seen a few that my heat press is heavy, and I'm not going to be able to move it around. Uh, but Shauna, do we have anything else that, that we need to answer at this point? Not currently. Okay, perfect. If you do have questions, please feel free to chat those in. We will make a couple stops along the way to answer the questions that you have. All right. Standardizing logo sizes. So this is first because it is of utmost importance to making the lean logo formula work. The whole formula is based on your ability to gang sheet at our transfer manufacturing companies. So you want to be able to take all of the real estate and use it for your multiple customers and gang everything uh, together to where you're getting multiple logos per sheet. For those of you who don't know what a gang sheet is or haven't seen one today, maybe this is your first class. I will just pull one from back here. So ultra color transfers are coming on an 11 and a half by 18 sheet. That sheet is yours to do what you want with the real estate on it. So we are encouraging you to gang, to make this lean logo formula work, you need to gang as many designs on here as possible. So there are no color limitations. If you can, if you're watching in Zoom and you can see me holding up the sheet, you can see that there are, uh, I actually don't even know how many colors are on the sheet, but there's half tones and fades and all kinds of stuff on it. So it's a full color sheet that I wouldn't even try and uh, count the number of colors on. So there are no color limitations. You can gang your customers, customer one's full color logo with customer two's full color logo, even if they're completely different uh, customers. The one caveat to that is each sheet 
that you order must be identical to realize the costing benefits. Okay. Uh, and Pam, I see you, you say we can only see the slides. If you click uh, below and watch this in Zoom rather, in the, rather than in the Pathable platform, you should be able to see me on camera. I think it's going to be a small screen, but you should be able to see me. So if you can check that out, uh, that would be helpful. Um, so gang sheeting is the main most important key to making the lean logo formula work. You want to put as many customer logos on a sheet as possible. And we're going to keep coming back to this number in, in different places, but the, this is the number that we use at Stalls DFC, which DFC stands for Decorating Fulfillment Center. We want to average ganging at least six images per sheet. So when we send what we call a sheet run, which can be anywhere from uh, five sheets in Ultra Color Soft, you can order as few as five or however many you order. Uh, we'll talk about the price breaks along the way here in just a second. We want to average, if we send 10 orders, 10 sheet orders in a day of 10 sheets each, because they have to be identical sheets, we want to average six logos per sheet to make it make the most costing sense for us. The more we can fit on, the lower the cost per logo gets because you're just amortizing the cost of that sheet across how many logos you get uh, on that particular sheet. So our, our magic number at our facility is six logos. Some days we only get four, some days we get eight. But if over the course of a program or over the course of the month, we are averaging six logos per sheet, we know that we are making the Lean Logo formula work for us. Okay. All right, so we want to, um, to get to that six average, we want to standardize uh, logo sizes. And what I mean by that, if you look at the left side of your slide, we have large logo taking up about half the sheet, medium logo taking up about a quarter of the sheet, small logo taking up an eighth, and extra small logo taking up a 16th of the sheet. So those sizes, that I just mentioned to you that a large logo fits two on a sheet is actually the standardized sizes that Transfer Express offers to you in the piece pricing, which we're gonna show you in just, just a second, but I'm gonna give you those sizes. So a large logo is 11 and a half by 8.75. And we can, uh, this information, if you stick around after the class and download the Lean Logo Formula book, this is outlined in there step by step. So if you want to write this down, you can certainly do that. But if not, you can just download the PDF book afterwards and all of the details are in there. So the large logo is 11 and a half by 8.75. You can fit two of those on a sheet. A medium size logo, and I'm encouraging you to standardize sizes to your customers that Transfer Express standardizes to their customers. Just pass along that standardization to where you know how many you're getting up on a sheet at any one time. Our medium logo is 8.75 by 5.5. You can get four of those on our sheet size. So if you have only medium logos, no, you can fit four customers up at once. So we're not to the magic number yet. Large, I can fit two. Medium, I can fit four. I really want to get to six. So small logos, which are 5.5 by 4.1, and this is inches, 5.5 inches by 4.1 inches, I can fit eight small logos up on that sheet. So that gets me above, right, my uh, average of six that I'm looking for. Extra small logos, which are, uh, hopefully you've learned in the classes uh, before this, Depending on your placement, extra small logos are actually very popular right now. This size, it's three and a quarter inch by two and a half inch. So a little bit smaller than probably what most people would consider a left chest, but smaller logos are being placed on sleeves, the back of the neck, different places on different garments. So those extra small logos, I can fit 16 of those up on my gang sheet. So the sheet that you are looking at has what, one, two, three, four, five logos on it. So if it was my business, I would want to sell to my customer in a way that allows me to sell maybe a large logo. I would probably eliminate the medium logo. I would put two smalls up and four extra smalls to where I'm getting closer to that average of six. Now we know our customers are probably the same as your customers. You can't always, um, sell them on the small logos. So again, that's why we look at an average. We wanna standardize the size 
and say, look, when you get a large logo, this is as big as you can make it. Uh, and here's what it looks like. The eight and 0.75 by 11 by 11 and a half inches is, is plenty of real estate to put on the front of a shirt and get a nice uh, large logo look. But you want to use those sizes to your advantage. So I am encouraging you, part of the secret sauce that we use at Stalls DFC is standardizing our logo sizes with Transfer Express's sizes to fit the most up on a sheet that we can. Okay. So that's secret number one. And that'll take some work on your side. But uh, when you're making samples, use those sizes, standardize it. All right. Secret sauce part number two, establishing smart quantity breaks. So take a look at the pricing that's on the screen. This is ultra color soft pricing per sheet. If you look, and this is just me personally, I would not offer I would set my minimums, establishing smart quantity breaks. You have to start setting minimums for your customers, right? Because they're going to come to you and be like, how much for three shirts? If it's full color, ultra color is really not the best solution for that. You're going to want to use some type of print cut technology, which, you know, choosing the right transfer type is important. But if we're building our foundation for a business on ultra color transfers, or if we're transforming our business, which I can tell you this has done for our decorating business. Ultracolor has transformed what we've been able to do uh, with our own internal decorating business. I'm going to set the minimum at 10 pieces, at least. I don't uh, just dealing with artwork, dealing with order forms, dealing with a customer. I don't want to take too many five-piece orders, right? Because you're going to invest the same amount of time probably dealing with a five piece order as you are dealing with a 500 piece order on the front end. When we're talking artwork, one piece of artwork can get you a five piece or it can get you a 500 piece. So my suggestion is to start with a minimum of 10 pieces per logo uh, for the customers that you're going to sell to. So that puts you in a price range for that full sheet. You can see on the screen, 10 to 14 is $12 and 10 cents. Now, Transfer Express offers us a discount when we order 15 sheets. They also offer us another discount when we order 20. They also offer us another discount when we go to 25. So every five sheets for the first, for the first four or five price breaks are getting me a discount. I am going to suggest to you not to pass along those same discount levels to your customer. Pass along the standardized sizing that we talked about as secret sauce number one but don't pass along the same discount structure for quantity to your customer to where you can realize some of the benefit and make more money by building more orders into your sheets. So establish smart quantity breaks. And again, I'm going to make a suggestion to you. You start with a minimum of 10, $12.10 per sheet. If I jump and don't use the 15 piece price break and I offer my customer a price break at 20, what's my discount going from 10 pieces to 20 pieces? Uh, dollar wise, it's close to $4. Percentage wise, it's like 29.7% discount for me ordering transfers to go from 10 to 20. I'm going to realize a little bit of discount at 15, but I don't, there's not enough to pass along in my personal opinion. So I'm encouraging you to start a minimum of 10. Don't give your first discount until at least 20 pieces. I'm even okay if you go to 25, which is more in line with what our decorating facility does. But let's say you do 10, minimum of 10, then you get a close to 30% discount to order 20 sheets instead of 10 if you're selling larger orders, which is great. You can pass that along to your customer, some of it. I wouldn't pass along all 30%. Then the next break, again, when we go from 20 to 25, we're not saving even a dollar off of the sheet price. So my encouragement to you if you order 25, great. You save that dollar per sheet on that order. Do not pass that along to your customer. Make your next price break at 35. And again, the reason I say that is it's more than a 25% discount to you to go from that 20 to 35 range. You're saving actually 26% to go from 20 to 35. So my encouragement on establishing smart quantity breaks Set your minimum a little bit higher than what Transfer Express allows or, or target transfers allows. And don't pass along every single quantity break to your customer. Realize some of that profit for you because you'll notice what's going to happen. And we're going to talk about this challenge uh, in just a little bit. But what will happen is customer one is going to need 10 large logos. 
customer two is going to need 12 medium logos. Customer three is going to need 26 small logos, and you're going to be mixing and matching and over ordering in some cases anyway. So don't pass along all the quantity breaks, realize some of those for yourselves and get some free transfers for your customer or uh, just for samples that you can use later when they come back to reorder. So establishing smart quantity breaks is extremely important to making the lean logo formula as profitable as it can be for you. All right. Number three part of the secret sauce is product assortment and logo placement. Now I'm going to talk a lot about product assortment closer to the end of our time when I give you specific job examples. So I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on it right now, but what I mean by product assortment is compare your cost or the average selling price of a t-shirt versus a polo versus a quarter zip. So let's just say, and I'm going to throw out numbers. Let's say a t-shirt costs you $3 to buy from your wholesale apparel supplier. A polo shirt costs you $8 to buy from your wholesale apparel supplier. And that quarter zip costs you closer to 20. Okay. You think, well, I'm only spending $3 on the t-shirt. I can make more money off of it. But the reality is you can't sell the t-shirt for more than 10 or $15. So maybe you're only making five to $10 on that t-shirt where the polo that you bought for eight, you can sell for 25. So I have what, $17 in profit there, not including my transfer cost. Again, I'll get into details on that in a bit. But if I can sell my customer a quarter zip that cost me 20, I can sell that to them for closer to 40 to $50. I am using the same ultra color transfer with the same cost on that t-shirt as I am on that polo, as I am on that quarter zip, because I'm standardizing my sizes. So my left chest size is the same and it's going on t-shirt, polo, quarter zip. You can even throw that left chest size on a bag that you may be able to upsell at a higher margin or uh, profit number as well. But product assortment that you're offering to your customers is extremely important to making your business more profitable. That's how we get that $5 higher is really product assortment is where you're gonna see the big jump in that. Again, I encourage you, uh, I'll give you more details at the end, but download the Lean Logo Formula book for very specific examples of how that works, okay? Um, and I, I don't go into it right now because we only have an hour together and I don't wanna go <laughs> terribly long over, but consider product assortment. $3 t-shirt, you're gonna make five to $8 on. $8 polo, you're gonna make eight to $12 on. $20 quarter zip, you're going to make $20 to $25 on, same transfer. So you can sell all three if you want, but try and sell more quarter zips because your average profit per item is going to go through the roof compared to selling uh, t-shirts. Um, the other idea, which I, I kind of talked about as part of that uh, product assortment is logo placement. I am going to put our standardized size left chest logo in multiple places. If you take a look at the um, at the screen, you can see we have a, a left pocket, we have a right chest. Uh, some folks are putting things on the bottom left of shirts, bottom right of shirts. You can put it on the back yoke. Uh, you can put it on a bag. You can put it on all different types of items. So that's the great thing when we standardize a size, especially across our product assortment. We're All we are doing is realizing savings by ordering more transfers and giving our customers more expensive options that they're going to want to wear uh, that they want for their group, especially if their group is selling uh, to another group. I know that's the case. The very first example we gave when we said meet Michael selling to travel teams. I know that the person who's selling to the travel team is actually selling to the parents who want to spend money to represent the team. Again, lots of great uh, examples in the, in the book if you want more details on how that works. But product assortment and logo placement makes a big deal. It's part of the secret sauce of making the lean logo formula work. Now, the last part, and again, what I'm showing you are the big four of the secret sauce, there's more uh, that can help you make the most of the lean logo formula um, that we just don't have time to go into. But part four is no art fees tied into having a designer from Transfer Express or Target Transfers that you can come in, upload artwork and design something for your customers to sell. Typically, if you're not doing your own artwork, you're gonna go out to uh, 
probably a gig website, ask somebody to do artwork for you, or maybe you hire an artist. Basically, you're going to be paying for art one way or another if you are creating anything custom for your customer. And fact of the matter is, most customers that you're selling to don't have art that's ready for printing anyway, right? They take a picture of a shirt, they take a screenshot off of the internet and say, this is what I want it to look like. And they send it to you and then you have to figure it out. Um, at least that's the life I've lived in uh, our decorating facility a lot. So it's great to have the easy view designer and transfer express not have any art fees associated with uploading uh, your artwork to be able to get it print ready. So that is just a savings of something that you don't have to outsource, you don't have to worry about, you can just upload it uh, on the Transfer Express Designer or design within the Transfer Express Designer and avoid art fees, okay? All right, so all that to say, if you're sitting here and you are paying attention and you are thinking, which I know you have been all day is thinking, so I'm gonna ask you to think a little bit more. It's easy to say, just gang up sheets and send them. Just gang them up, send them out. What if you only have one customer and they only have one job? Good question. That's a challenge that is uh, that you have when approaching the Lean Logo formula is how do I build it to a scale that I start to realize the benefits that you're talking about? Because if you're only taking uh, one order at a time, it's very difficult to realize the gang sheet benefits if you don't have multiple orders. So what's the solution? for filling a sheet because we said gang sheeting is really the number one key to making the lean logo formula work. So how do I solve the problem if I don't have uh, items to gang sheet? I'm gonna suggest to you uh, two things, two ways to solve that. Solution one, use single image costing to build your pricing. So the price grids that we have been showing you and if you go to transferexpress.com or uh, target transfers, you can see that there is a gang sheet price and there are also individual image prices. So this is going to cause you to uh, have to move your minimum order a little bit or just amortize the cost of 20 images over 10 and charge that. So you, you can think about what's what works best for you and for the market that you're working in. But I would encourage you to build your pricing to your customer off of the single image pricing. Because if you only have one job, you can still send that one job out to get printed and get it back to you and you're still going to make money on it. It's not going to be potentially as much. Actually, it's not going to be as much as if you had multiple orders to gang because that's using the lean logo formula to reduce our costs and make more profit. However, if we price according to the single image to make money, then you're good to go there. Uh, you're making money on every order. You want to make sure Anybody who has started a small business wants to make sure, especially a bootstrapped small business, you want to make sure you're cash flow positive on every order that you're doing. You don't, you don't want to take loss leaders in the first three months of business. So build your pricing to the single image costing that you see on your screen. So for example, your extra small image costs you $225, right? At uh, at at 20 pieces. Your small image is $250 your medium image is 345 and your large image is 420. We said on uh, the previous slide with the sheet pricing up that our 10 sheets was about $12.10, I think it was. Let me check back just to make sure I'm saying that right. Yeah, 10 sheets was $12.10. If I'm getting six logos, which is my magic number, <clears throat> up on those uh, 10 sheets, I'm paying just, just over $2 per logo, okay? so. If I price all of my standardized sizes by the per image pricing that you see on your screen, I am making money there. And again, I'm just going to encourage you to, we'll, we'll talk pricing strategy later, but I would encourage you to sell it for what you can get it for. Like don't, um, we'll get into it. You, you don't want to limit yourself on margin. And I'll give you a couple examples of why that is, but price based on the single image pricing. And then when you have the opportunity to implement the formula and gang a sheet, you're making more money on those jobs. But make sure you're making money at the single image price before, and then you can grow the business to get to lean logo formula profitability. All right. So suggestion, another suggestion for how to do that. Solution number two. So that was a pricing suggestion. Use single image costing to build your pricing. 
Secondly, in an effort to gang up a sheet, consider providing pricing based on the turn time that you're offering to your customer. So what I mean there is if your customer is willing to accept a lead time on their order of 10 to 15 days, then hold the order until you get a couple more and order Lean Logo Ultra Color Transfers once a week instead of placing your orders every day as you get them. Okay, so place your orders on uh, Mondays before 11 a.m. Eastern time, and they're going to ship on Friday, so you have them the next Monday to produce, right? With the uh, uh, or if they're if it's a three day, two or three day turn, you would have them before the end of the week. You have the weekend to produce, and you deliver um, the next Monday. But what what timing out your orders does is it gives you the opportunity to go sell more to fill the sheet with more logos. So price based on single image and offer your customers either a discount to wait longer or an upcharge to get it quicker. Up to you on which way you go. I personally like the upcharge for getting it quicker, but that's just me. Um, but totally up to your business and your presentation and sales style on how you handle that. But provide pricing based on order timing. Five-day turn is this much money, more than if you're willing to accept a 10 or a 15-day turn on your order. That gives you an opportunity to employ the Lean Logo formula and gang an ultra color sheet. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, we're going to flip to pricing strategy here. So I just want to give one more opportunity before we do that uh, for questions. <clears throat> hey, Zach, there were some questions. Uh, okay, go for it. Is there a setup fee for ultra color? Uh, I'm going to let Sue answer that in the chat, but not that I am aware of. I do not yeah. believe that there is a setup fee for ultra color. No. Yeah, there is not. Okay, perfect. Um, do all the gang sheets have to be identical? To get the quantity breaks, yes. So you could send three different gang sheets in in a day, but you would need to order five of each of those gang sheets. So to get the quantity discount, the sheet itself does have to be identical, yes. A question from Denise, when selling these full color transfers, should I disclose that I'm using transfers as the print method or would it be better to just call it full color digital printing? Denise, I like that question. So that's a marketing decision. And my personal preference is not to call them uh, transfers uh, because you don't know, again, my opinion, you don't know what people's perception of the word transfer is, if they have any familiarity with that at all. And again, this is a very long time ago, but if you're, if you're selling to folks who remember the transfers from the 80s, they're not going to want to transfer just because of that perception of what they were like 30 or 40 years ago. They don't understand how, how far the technology uh, has come and that they might not even be able to tell a difference between uh, a transfer and some other print method. So my personal recommendation is not to call them transfers and come up with whatever your own marketing name is. That's personal opinion. Feel free to disagree with me on that one, guys. Anything else, Shauna? Yeah. Next question. Is there a trick or a tip for sizes extra small to, you know, multiple XL where the sizes change? Um, no, no, there's not. Um, usually what, what we do is we just let the customer know ahead of time that the graphic size is going to be the same and it's going to look a little bit different. Um, typically it will fit on a shirt if you're sizing for the, the only place where you would probably get into tricky is if you're getting youth or very small women sizes combined with large men sizes, then you would probably want to create two different logos, maybe use a large for the men's and a medium for those smaller women's and children's sizes, but you could gang those on the same, on the same sheet. Okay. Next question. Uh, someone mentioned you could upload logos from the internet and Transfer Express will make it printable. Uh, what I just wanted to point out to everybody, Zach, was that yep. Sue responded that they will do the best to clean up the logo. Internet art isn't good, but she also mentioned that uh, they won't do licensed logos without the licensing agreement. Yes, good clarification. Thanks, Sue. Um, 
I'm looking through here. Are the transfers hot or cold peel? They are maybe are new to the. Uh, they are they are cool peel. They are cool peel, and you can in in my experience, if you're applying to a synthetic fabric like polyester, you can peel it a little bit warmer than you can on cotton. Uh, the five dollars per item does that take into account? that it's a cold peel. So that would be from your earlier slide on the um, price. Yes. yes. Yeah, the average output, yes, that does take that into account. Um, and then there's a question on the same pricing for custom art versus using easy print to design. Uh, I actually don't know the answer on that for ultra color. I, I would have yes. to ask for Sue's help or you or Shauna. Yeah, it is one. It is one price based on the transfer type. There's a pricing difference for soft versus stretch and blocker. Okay, but is there a, a difference for using templated artwork versus um, custom art? No. Okay. Um. All right. I think that's it. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> if you have more, please feel free to continue chatting those in in the uh, Pathable platform. We're gonna. We are going to talk pricing strategy. And the statement that's up there, the best pricing strategy is one that maximizes profit. So what that statement means is that the best pricing strategy isn't necessarily using gross margin. It isn't necessarily using markup. It isn't necessarily using some, some stock percentage that we apply to everything. What what we believe or what I believe and Josh as well, who helped um, put, put this pricing strategy stuff together, we believe that you should maximize profit based on what your customer is willing to pay or what your market is willing to pay. So I'll give you, um, actually, let me get into these and, and I'll, I'll give you a couple uh, more concrete examples afterwards. But ask yourself the question when you're going into your pricing strategy or building your pricing grid or however it is you're, you're planning to present that, how much will the customer pay for what I'm selling, okay? And we're just gonna go through some examples. So as we go through these examples, I want you to know that the, uh, estimated sales price that you see closer towards the bottom of the sheet, which we'll get there, but the estimated sales price, we surveyed our customers on what they thought they could sell these items for to the people that they sell to or to their particular market. So the response is literally hundreds of them came back from people just like you who are running decorating businesses, and they believed on average, this is what they could command price-wise for the decorated goods that, that I'm gonna show you, okay? So just want you to know this is based on real customer information, putting it, putting it together and averaging it out. So um, we are looking at an OGO performance quarter zip. We talked quarter zips already. Those are, uh, in my opinion, one of the uh, hottest, easiest, most profitable items to sell, okay? So our ultra color soft logo cost, you can see in parentheses underneath this particular example, since it's a small or extra small, it's actually kind of in between that uh, logo based on nine logos a sheet and we ordered 35 sheets, okay? So our logo cost on this is 96 cents. If we got to our six average, worst case, our logo cost on this is gonna be, uh, if we used our single pricing, our logo cost is going to be two to three dollars for that left chest logo. So you're looking at one to three dollars for your logo cost on this. Okay. Uh, but if we're using the lean logo formula and ganging, 96 cents. Our garment cost uh, from the blank wholesale supplier was $19.99 for this quarter zip. Okay. Our estimated labor cost, this is based on two minutes per garment. In the Lean Logo Formula $5 profit average I gave you, that was even slower than that. We based that on three, three minutes per garment. Okay, so we're even giving you more time. But the estimated labor cost at $12 an hour is 40 cents. Um, so our total cost to decorate the shirt, $21.35. Again, polled hundreds of customers, got hundreds of responses. What do they believe they can sell this decorated performance quarter zip for with a left chest full color logo? And the answer on average was $45.
So that is a profit per shirt of 2152 and a profit on this whole shirt job of 35 shirts of $753. And it would take us about 70 minutes to complete that at the heat press. Okay. That's cutting apart our transfers, laying out our shirts, applying the graphic, cold peeling, ready to, ready to box and give to our customers. So it, this particular job uh, would be just over an hour and you would profit $753. So I wanna go back to a couple of those secret sauce items. So one, we were able to gang, right? Cause we have a left chest logo and we, we ordered 35 sheets and ganged it with other logos. Two, our product selection was a high end item. Again, I'll repeat it. We can put that left chest logo on a $3 t-shirt, but we can only sell that $3 t-shirt with that left chest logo probably for $10 or $12. So we drastically reduce our, uh, our profit window by changing the item that we're printing on. Okay. So find an item that your customer is uh, willing to buy and give good, better, best scenarios, right? Like, look, we could do these t-shirts for 12 bucks, or you could offer these quarter zips for 35, 45. Even if you were willing to take um, lower profit on this, which I would encourage you not to get what your customer is willing to pay. Um, it's still a significant profit item. 753 bucks for just over an hour is work that um, I think all of us would be willing to do all day. So that's one example. I have, I have a lot of them. Hopefully we can get through them all. Second option, Sport Tech Electric Heather Polo, okay? Again, we ganged this logo with the logo that was on the first example, because remember, colors don't matter when we're ganging a sheet. So we can gang this Bedford All-Stars logo with the <clears throat> other company's logo on a sheet. So we're still at 96 cents for that transfer. This Electric Heather Polo cost us 8.72. Our estimated labor cost, same, about 40 cents. Takes two minutes to apply the transfer, whether it's to a jacket, a polo, a t-shirt, you name it, the application time is the same. So our total cost here is $11.08. The hundreds of customers that responded to our poll about what could you sell this polo for, said they could sell it for 30 bucks. Now I know if you're selling wholesale, that number's probably not gonna be as high. You have to uh, uh, temper it with who your customer base is. But if you're selling to an end user, $30 is a completely reasonable price for a customized full color logo decorated polo. Your profit per shirt puts you at $18.92. Again, 35 shirts, $662, 70 minutes. So the quarter zip netted us over $700 for our 70 minutes. This polo is netting us 662 for our 70 minutes. We ganged them on the same sheet. We can sell them to two different companies, okay? Next example is a Bella Canvas Racerback tank. Ultra color logo, 96 cents. If we're getting nine up, we're 96 cents all day, right? At 35 sheets. So our garment cost here for the Racerback tank is 420. Labor's not changing. Soft logo cost isn't changing. Our total cost for that is $6.11. Estimated sales price, $25. Profit per shirt, $18.89. So again, we're close to $700 for our 70 minutes and nothing, nothing changes. We're ganging on the same sheet. We're applying with the same heat press. It's us or the same person that we have in front of the heat press. It's literally just picking up one shirt, then picking up the other shirt, and then picking up a different shirt and applying them all exactly the same way to realize these types of uh, profit numbers. Here's a Sport Tech fleece lined quarter zip. Again, uh, it's gonna be a very similar outcome to the other. It's a little bit more expensive on our garment cost at 24.24. Se estimated sales price was about the same as what our first quarter zip was, the OGO performance quarter zip at $40. Profit per shirt's a little bit lower because our cost on the shirt was a little bit higher, okay? Uh, same time to complete the job for 30 for 35 units, profit of 414.51, okay? Sport Tech Pipe Polo, we're looking at similar numbers. Again, our garment cost jumped up to 11.36 on this polo. If you remember, the last polo was around the uh, eight, $9 range, but the estimated sales price remains the same, okay? So even though 
this sport tech piped polo is a little bit more expensive for you to order from the wholesale company in the eyes of our 170 uh, or so decorators that responded to this poll, they sell for the same price to the end user. So again, smart choices in product selection help you to maximize profit using the lean logo formula. So again, estimated sales price, $30. This one's 560 bucks for 70 minutes. Long sleeve workout top. I won't bore you with the details. You can see them, but you're looking at 420 bucks. Again, 70 minutes for 35 pieces. Augusta Sportswear Jogger using the same logo that was on our racer back, if you were paying close attention. So we're using the same logo here that we were, we were using on our racer back. This jogger can command $30 retail, according to our customer survey. And <clears throat> it is a little bit more expensive. So $22.24 was our garment cost. So here is one that if we really only think the sales price is going to be 30 bucks, and our garment cost is $22.24, it's worth consideration. Do I want to offer this to the customer? Or maybe I need to offer this add-on to get the shirt sales. Like maybe they need the pants to be there. But again, our profit per pants, 404. So that's a little bit below what I think our $5 average would be. But when you put in all of the other stuff that we've decorated uh, on this one gang sheet, you're significantly over that average of, of $5 profit. So again, uh, I want to reiterate that that $5 is a low number if we're pricing to what the customer will pay and we're smart with the formula and use uh, the secret sauce. Sport Tech Polyester Performance Hoodie, logo cost is the same, garment cost, 2036. Uh, 2172 is our total cost. We can say we can sell that hoodie for $40. Again, we're over $500 for our hours worth of time at the heat press. And then a, a canvas tote. So our cost here is $12.60 for a total cost of $15. Estimated sale price on this canvas tote is only $20. So again, I would ask you to consider, is this something the customer really needs? Or is it something that helps us sell more to that customer to get to those higher value items? Again, that's in store selection or your pitch selection to the customer on what you want to offer them. Do we offer the whole catalog or do we go highly targeted? I am a fan of highly targeted. So these are the five keys to pricing, my opinion. Don't discount because once you do it once, you're going to be expected to do it again. You set an expectation that you just really don't want to have on the business. And again, this is how you make the most profit with your heat press and the time that you have. Your time is limited. If it's just you, you're going to have to decide whether I want to be heat pressing today or whether I want to be selling. And there will be days that come that you have to heat press and you can't be selling. And you're not going to want to stand at that heat press for $3 an item when you could be standing at the heat press for $8 an item. OK, so I encourage you, especially in the early stages of your business, if it's not your model all the way around, do not discount. OK, you don't need it to sell. I promise you, you don't need it to sell. Come up with something else. Two, when you're pitching your price, say the price is and deliver the price. And then be quiet. OK, that can be through email. That can be on the phone. That can be text message, that can be in person. The important part, deliver the price and listen, okay? You will get a reaction if they think it's too high, all right? So deliver the price, don't give uh, the idea that a discount is available. What I, what I see happen, and this happens in all sales organizations, okay? I, I'm guilty of it myself and I hate it when I do it, but it happens, okay? We say the price is $20, but if you whatever, 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 I could probably take another 5% off or I could save you $5 or, 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 or. Deliver the price, the price is, and let them get back to you on if that price is okay. I wanna give you, uh, one specific example that I have, there was an opportunity that we had at our uh, decorating fulfillment center uh, in the recent past where we had, uh, I'll just be honest with you, we had no idea what the price it had because it was something that we hadn't done before. We, we had done transfers, right? We were, use, were using ultra color transfers for this particular job. Uh, we know it's applying apparel, 
but the actual apparel items themselves and the customer that we were talking to, we just didn't have any experience with. So we had no clue uh, what to go in with the price at. So we said, okay, here's what we think we can command. And it was higher than uh, what I think it should have been. Okay. I was, I was ready to go lower, but I said, I followed my own advice. And I said, the price is this. The customer came back within a couple of days and said, okay, we're ready to go on that order. And that was it. Didn't have to follow up. Didn't have to offer a discount to get it. They could have come back and said, hey, uh, if you can get to this, you know, whatever, just don't leave the option, say the price is. Three, keep it simple. This is um, something that, that we are working on as well. So typically, uh, especially in the contract decorating business, if any of you are familiar with it, contract decorating is historically when you're selling your decorating services to someone else to sell to someone else, okay? And in contract decorating, we typically give, oh, here's the decoration price. Here's the price to receive it into our facility. Here's the price to put a tag on it. Here's the price to put it in a bag. Here's the price to do this. Here's the price to do that. There's a bunch of add-ons to it, right? Just give a price, keep it simple, make it easy for your customer to understand. Now you can certainly list out what's included with that price, but do your best to keep the pricing simple and easy for a customer to understand what they're getting. Four, have a grid. If you can come up with a pricing grid that you can show to your customers, that makes delivery those first three things even easier, right? A grid keeps it simple. It says you don't discount because here's my price. And it's you saying, here is the price. This is the price. So it's nice to come up with a grid that you can provide to somebody to say, look, this is standardized. This is what my pricing is, okay? And then lastly, deliver it quickly. The longer you take, the more opportunities they have to either one, look elsewhere, or two, the, the whole communication and sales process up front is an opportunity for you to build trust with your customer that you know what you're doing and you're going to deliver on what you say you're going to do. So to say, hey, I'm going to have you a price on Monday, have the price on Monday. That's, a, that's closing a sale and building trust right there by delivering on what you said you were going to do. So deliver pricing quickly, builds trust in the sales process for you to be able to close it down and close more sales down and start building those sheets that are maximizing the lean logo formula. Okay. All right. So I'm going to open it up for questions one more time. I'm just going to review this slide and then we'll open it up for questions until everybody wants to log off because we have another, uh, we're, we're at about time, but we don't have a class back to back with us. We do have one class to close down the night. It's a Q&A session with a lot of our speakers that begins at 8.30 Eastern time. I would encourage you to log back in for that, but we're going to hang out here for just a minute. So this slide is um, our new book, The Lean Logo Formula, Learn How to Build a Highly Profitable Apparel Business from Home. Okay. So um, there's a little blurb there about myself and Josh. We've been doing this for a long time. We, we, we cut the grass and clean the toilets at stalls when we were kids, okay? So we've been doing it for a long time. We decided during, um, during shutdown when COVID hit last year that we were gonna write a book teaching people how to do what we've been able to do at our decorating facility using ultra color transfers. And that's what the book is about. It's finding the right heat press, it's understanding the formula to make the most of it, and it's how to sell to people. So I would encourage you to visit. Um, you can download it from the Pathable website here. I believe if you're logged into our class page, there should be a section for downloads. I'll let Shauna clarify that in a minute because uh, I haven't done it yet. But I believe there's a download section where you can download the book here on the page. Still going to take you to the site. Perfect. All right, so you can download it once you go to the site on the screen. Josh is sitting in the room behind the computer telling me. So you can read this book online for free at uh, the website that you see on the screen, tinyurl.com slash lean logo formula. So I would encourage you to go read that. Um, it's probably, if you're going to sit down and do it in, in one sitting, probably a 30, 45 minute read. Uh, but it has pretty much everything that we have covered in this class and then some, a lot more details, a lot more concrete examples on um, how to build a lean logo business. So I am glad that you decided to join me 
this evening slash this afternoon for those of you on the West Coast. I am going to open it up here for another maybe uh, five minutes of questions if we have some, and then we'll wrap it up. So stick around if you would like to. Okay, Zach, we have a question. Uh, it is, I believe the quarter zip example that you gave was a $45 final price. And Marla is asking, what if somebody is reselling that garment? How would you price it? Um, I would probably give them, well, two things. One, can you ask them what type of profit they want to make on it? Uh, just to where you know uh, where they need to be, like what are, what their expectation is. Typically, a reseller of those products is going to want to get somewhere between 30 to 50% in their margin points. So you can take that off. So on that $45, if we took 30% uh, off of that, you're talking what, $13.50 or something like that. Um, so they would probably expect to buy it for no more than about $30 is my uh is my guesstimate depending on who they're reselling to but they would probably expect to buy in the 30 to 35 dollar range to resell it at, at 45. okay um in the examples that you gave with uh nine sheets there there were 315 logos um so andrew said that's a lot of jobs how many garments would an average sale be how many garments would an average sale be so oh man that's a real i like that question and it, it really depends on the market and the customer that you build and you target. So um, for us, selling mostly to folks who are selling into the team sports space, we see most orders come in in the, we, we do see most orders in the 25 to 35 piece range because you think uh, travel team or high school team, whether that's baseball, you know, a baseball roster is probably going to be somewhere between 15 to 20 kids plus their parents. A football roster is more on the 50 side. So your football clubs are bigger. Your lacrosse rosters are a little bit bigger. Uh, I believe, you know, basketball, you're going to have 12 kids plus parents. So that 25 to 35 range is probably pretty common, but you can, uh, you can start to get upwards of that 50 to 75 range in the team sports space. Uh, but that's just for us, for that space. It, it, it depends on your customer base. Okay, next question. Do you recommend giving two or three price points based on the quality for the same type of item or just start with one and offer another if the customer um, pushes back? Mm. Uh, when we're talking two different price points, are we, uh, if, if whoever asked that, if they can clarify, are we talking... Um, the actual garment itself. Like if we're selling a t-shirt, are we offering three different t-shirt types? I would not personally recommend doing that um, because the perceived value of your average consumer is a t-shirt is a t-shirt unless you're saying, I wouldn't give more than two options on a t-shirt. I would give your cheap option if they need one. And I would give my tri-blend really nice finished t-shirt option uh, if they have one. That that's personal opinion on the t-shirt side. When you're in quarter zips and polos, if they pick a style that they like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with it because the perceived value of a polo is $20, $25 um, almost all the time. You, yes, you answered the question. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, next question. What do you recommend for orders? Having the customer pay upfront, pay part upfront, or something else based on the order quantity? Mm, okay. I, we're getting down to that. How do we get the money? I love that question. <laughs> so do we pay up front? Do we pay half up front? Um, this is just my opinion. If you're starting out, I would, oh man, it's really up to you on, on what kind of cash flow you have. But I, I'm a fan of getting it all up front because you know you're going to deliver on what you promised. Um, and, you know, if there's some type of refund guarantee that, that you need to get in there, if it's not delivered in this time or whatever. But again, I would just say, look, it's this much money. You got to pay up front so I can order the stuff in and get it to you. Um, so I would go that route first and I would take my own pricing strategy advice and say, it's pay up front and be quiet <laughs> and see if they say, well, uh, can I give you half down? And then that's that would be a, an opportunity to negotiate with them uh, to where you're not negotiating on price. You're negotiating on if they're paying you half now or half later um, to, to remove that 
uh, to take the focus off of price and get it on when, when can I pay you? I would ask for it up front. If they say, can I give you half now, half later, because they have previous experience with another decorator that did that, then that's certainly something you could consider. Okay. I would not offer terms. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. Uh, usual return policy for customized items. No returns. On any, anything that's customized, it's very difficult. The, the only reason that we would accept a return is if the, is if the workmanship was not good. I mean, if, you know, if I misapplied it and the transfer comes off, then I'm obviously going to credit them back. Um, but I know I can also fix that. So maybe at that point, I would offer them a discount just for the inconvenience. But a customized item that I have delivered and is exactly what I said it was going to be, there's no returns on that. Those are all the questions today, tonight, Zach. Okay, perfect. I want to thank everybody for logging in and hanging out as long as you have. I know it's been a long day for those of you who have been here the whole time. And those of you on the other side of the ocean, go to bed, man. Go to bed. No, don't go to bed. We have one more session, 30. So thanks, everybody. Uh, we're logging off. If you have any more questions, you can use the Pathable platform to get them to us, and we will get you answers back throughout the week. Please make sure you go and download or read the book for more info. It was great being here. Thanks, everybody. Hope to see you soon. Bye.